J.P. Dillon here at the in-laws house and they've offered to me two uh, old console TVs. One is a Montgomery Ward's black and white and the other one's a Zenith Roundy. Uh, but as you can see, it's fairly buried in storage here. So if I can figure out a way to get these things out, they're coming home with me. And then uh, we'll have two more things to tinker with. So it's pretty badly tetris here. You've got mattress and mattress and mattress and mattress and mattress and then whatever else is in front of these so this will be a challenge at least it's air conditioned in here a lot of stuff a lot of stuff and then when we move these I'm not going to have to worry about this stuff falling over because it looks like it's all leaned up against there and then is it going to fit through the tiny door How do they get it in here? That roll-up door hasn't worked in a while. Alright, gotta figure something out. Mmm. Diamond needle. Not a roundy. It's like a 70 or 71 Zenith uh, Space Command 600. The power tuning. Oh yeah. This is rarer than a roundy. A little weathered, but it's a Zenith, it probably still works fine. Just gotta get him in that. All right, had one of my in laws help me hoist these two things in here. Oh, so Arnold Boots, great great stepfather and stepdad in law, now deceased got to make a new hump for this but thankfully this didn't get busted the screws that hold the back on this are missing the, this is the Ward's WG 5743 I've got another monkey Ward's with this same chassis and I re recognize that a, is it a series string looks like a series string And then, still haven't figured out the uh, zenith here yet. I'm sure there's a chassis number or something on the inside. Horizontal hold. Yeah. Third beat. Actually, I'm more uh, into this SC600 than I am the other one. My wife wanted me to rescue these since they belong in her, belong to her family, so she's got another 1979 or 1980 Hitachi upstairs that we're taking home too that she grew up with. All right, let me get these better situated and then wrap them up in the packing blankets. All right, all strapped in here. I don't think they're going anywhere. Ready for the uh, 70 mile trip downhill up here in uh, Santa Isabel. Nice quiet up here. All right, time to go clean up, put all the stuff back where I took it out, and uh, down the hill we go. All right, so now these are just kind of wedged in the shop here. Uh, let me s swing around and get a better shot of the zenith. I'm just really limited on room right now. <clears throat> uh, excuse me, but we are going to evaluate these and see what we're up against later on. I'm not going to try to fix them right now. I've got too much other stuff going on. But you can see this is a older Zenith, about 
about a 1970, uh, 71. It's got the sunshine emblem there. Probably means it has a black matrix tube in it. That'll make a nice picture. So these two sets belong to my wife's family. Uh, they were both her great grandparents set. As you can see down here, the name Lutz, her great grandparents. These were used regularly up until the 1990s, in which they went into storage after uh, they went into homes and then ultimately their passing, I guess. So, this one had some rat garbage in it. And if you're uh, squeamish about rats and rodents and gross things like that, you might want to like stop watching. So, all I'm really going to do at this point is test the CRTs on both of them. Maybe I'll find my dim bulb tester and we'll apply some juice to them and see what they do and what they don't do. So, the back on this really right now is just being held by a one screw. So, let's get that off and see what it looks like inside. Alright, let's do the reveal. There it is there. Oh, that's still held on by one more screw. Crap, i got to take one more screw off. Alright, now. Try this again. Take this out and away. It's a pretty fancy schmancy uh, audio chassis there. you got two 6BQ5s in the back. Probably Class A, since I don't see four of them, I only see two. It's your TV tuner up there. Fairly large speakers. Those look like uh, 12 inches. There's your evidence of rats everywhere. Someone's replaced a little fusible sand resistor there. Tends to open a lot. That's probably a vertical output transformer. For now, maybe that's your audio. Maybe that's your vertical output. Anyway, there's your horizontal output, your dampener in the back, and that's probably your oscillator right there. Lift up this compartment to service the tube here. That's a little big, but it's not too bad. It's probably a 1B3 or a 1K3 in there. They've got a test point down here for something. And there's your serial number. What kind of tube is this? It's got some kind of liquid oozing down there. It's all over the thing. Interesting. I know I'm making everybody dizzy at this point. You gotta remember this thing's on its side. The picture tube's on this like rail support. So does that mean the whole shebang slides out? Yeah, it could be. There's your mounting holes there, so it could be the whole thing just slides out. <clears throat> Don't know what type of CRT that is. Looks like a 21 or a 23 inch. Let's see if the back has anything on the tube diagram. There you go, 23 AHP4. And this is a Montgomery Ward WG5743A. Alright, let's get the CRT tester and see if this thing's any good. All right, so 20, oh, I'm looking at 22, it looks like a 23, 23, AH. Yeah, let's see it. Well, we can kind of get gauge what we're looking at. There's a 22 AHP 22 instead of a 23 AHP 22, so I guess we can use that. Probably same thing. Bias, 116 volts. Alright. 
16 volts and I'm going to get rid of the video 2 there we go and let's fire this thing off and let's adjust our filament up and let's see if she's coming alive yet Yeah, it's starting to glow. That's a good sign. We'll just give it a moment here to come up. And yeah, there we go. We're only doing the red, which is the black and white, so. Looks like it's got a, uh, a G1 short. Not good. No cutoff, of course. And no emission. So let's, it's got to remove G1 short. Let's see if it'll do that. Gotta wait for the light to come on. Hmm. All right. There we go. That brought that back. Up oh, for only a moment, though. Try that again. This is the fun part. The boring fun part. Basically it's waiting for the filament to cool off and then it charges a capacitor bank and then releases it through a resistor network to blast whatever short away there is. Alright, so it's holding there so far. Up, oh, and then it goes away again. So, <clears throat> this is does not, not show good signs of life. There's absolutely zero emission. So I'm thinking this thing is probably dead. We're just going to blast it with some rejuve current and see what happens. Still nothing. <clears throat> this is a. Uh, this CRT is just toast. So I don't really see going much further on this one until I can source a replacement CRT. I might have one. Yeah. There you go. Bad emission. And then we've got that uh, G1 short there. You see, just messing around with the. Uh... Of course, that didn't work, right? <clears throat> I'm using the universal adapter so the pins keep coming loose on it. Yeah, no matter which way you play it, Even if we jack down the bias a little bit, 
It's just nothing. The thing's just gone. There is zero emission. It's got a short in the control grid, so that pretty much does it in. So we're not going to go much further on this one until we can get a replacement CRT. Well, let's take a look at the Zenith. Maybe it has a better hope of life. All right, so on to this beast. No green halo on this, so either it's a later production tube or it was replaced. But there's your uh, power tuning there. You can click up or click down. Your presets tell you where you are. Auto tint guard, color level. This is definitely very early 70s. There's your remote transponder down there. There's the famous pull out controls. That's always kind of cool. And the sliding doors are fake. And this is probably. This is the fake wood finish. <laughs> this thing is beat. But I'm curious to see if it's resurrectable too. Apparently this was a favorite set uh, for her great grandmother to watch Jeopardy on. So let's get the back off and take a look inside. Alright, so let's yankee the back on this one. These just have the little twistable tab things which is kind of nice. Come on now, there we go. Ooh, look at that. This is one of the early ones, it's like a 71. There's your color DMOD board with the famous IC that loves to go bad. It's a hybrid. Here goes your 6Z10 there. If we flip up here. And see, 25 cc 50. I think that puts it at about 71. Very cool. That's the remote control module there, which is likely all transistorized. Oh, yeah. Take a look in high voltage cage here. Might have to take the uh, shunt out. Make sure it doesn't fall on the ground and bust open. That flyback looks like it's in good shape. Probably a 3CD3 or 3CDU. Numbers on those high voltage rectifiers are. And we'll just put that back. Well, for being in storage for so long, the chassis is in good shape, other than some dust. Doesn't look like the rodents have gotten to anything. Someone did replace the uh, bell fuse. Interesting. All right, let's get the CRT checker on this one. Ooh, and it's a chroma color tube. Yeah, definitely a black matrix. I should have known by that emblem that that's what I was looking at. So hopefully this is good. Since it's made in the Roland division, it's probably it's probably still test new. But I guess the, uh, the checker will reveal that. Silly me, I was going to see what number it was. Looks like a 25 VAQP22. What that says? Yeah, VAQP22. Okay, let's get the checker. All right, so there it is, 25 VAQP22, socket two, 132 volt bias. So there we go. So let's go ahead and connect this thing up. Okay, so 
Our filaments up to 6.3 volts. G1 looks good. Cathodes look good. Ooh, we have cutoff. Wow. Here, let's just uh, turn this up ever so slightly. We have cutoff. This is really good. This means that it's probably a savable CRT. Yeah, we've got a good blue gun. The red and green are kind of fluctuating. So you know what? I'm just going to let it bake for a little bit. And we'll come back to it in about an hour. So if we crank the filament voltage up, let's go to 8 volts. And we'll just let it bake for a little bit. And we'll come back to it in about an hour or so and see what it looks like. Okay, so this thing's been cooking for about an hour. Let me turn the light back on so we can see here. Um, turn this back down to 6.3 volts. And then if we go to our cutoff here, I'm going to wait for these to come back down since the guns are going to cool down again. No point adjusting this until it stabilizes. But nominally... Let's see where the emission falls. Pretty good, actually. So, that woke it up enough to I think it's a usable thing. That's really good. That means it, uh, it's going to have a decent picture. So I'm kind of excited about uh, getting these fixed. Obviously, the wards is going to be the toughest because I need to get a CRT for it. But this thing, we might just be able to soft start it and see what happens. But that's for another video. Right now, I just wanted to check these out. I got a lot of other stuff to deal with. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of where we're at with this. So, after another two hours at 8 volts. This is my result now. As you can see, I've got really kick-ass emission. Good tracking. Cutoff's really good. No, no shorts. No leakage. This thing's pretty happy now. So I'm like really stoked because, uh, well, it's a chroma color tube. On a Zenith hybrid chassis, assuming the color demodulator chips alive, it should produce a stellar picture. So this will definitely be a, a project at a later date. Obviously, I'm going to have to put the monkey wards on hold until I can find a, a CRT candidate to shove in there. Because this one is utterly dead. Um, but yeah, really happy about this. Uh, this one will fix up really well. We could stick this in the living room or something. We don't watch TV that much, but when we do, it'd be nice to have one with a decent picture. So, very cool. Alright, so before I finish up this video, I just want to do a little update on the Magnavox. Uh, I've had lots of people say, I want it, I want it, I want it, uh, but either the cost of what I'm asking for it or the uh, availability windows are limited and people haven't been able to be given a positive response in picking it up. So I'm just going to say that this is the last call. Uh, if it's not picked up within the next week, I'm going to take what I need off of it and the rest of it goes in the trash. As you can see here, it's literally blocking the entire walkway to the back of the storage, so it can't be here. Uh, there's plenty of stuff off of it that I can use for other repairs, but I figured I'd give someone else a shot at it and restoring it. And if you want to know realistically what this thing is worth sitting here as a whole, given the cabinet and everything and the working changer, I really want to get about $120 out of it. Uh, I know 
there are people that will criticize and say, oh, it's only worth about $20 or it's only worth about $40. Or there'll be folks that'll be like, well, I have to travel a great distance. And so therefore it shouldn't cost me anything because I have to fork out three to $400 to have it transported. But realistically, that's the cost of getting it to you. Uh, like Shango likes to say, you have to open your wallet and you have to really want one of these things. Uh, so like I said, I'll give it another week. Uh, I've had about eight people respond, but nobody in a positive enough way that I can ensure that it's getting picked up. And it will pretty much disappear after the end of next week. Uh, I'm just going to take what I need off of it and the rest of it will go in the trash. So if you want it, if you're willing to spend some coin on it, speak up. Otherwise, it goes away. Uh, there's another project in the works, too. This is another set that I brought home the other day. Uh, this is about a 1981 Hitachi. I'll do a video on this one later on, too. This was another family set uh, that she wants to stay in the family. It's pretty cool. It's missing its remote, but it's complete. It's in good shape. Hopefully the CRT is good. We'll find out. So, yeah. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed watching the video. I'll have more stuff for you soon. And uh, thanks for being a subscriber.